we've talked about uh, Kylie Minogue's Nether Regions, I feel on Sydney Radio. I'm wondering if it's, you've been enclosed for three years and you're just unleashing yourself now with these stories. Well, particularly with the Kylie thing, uh, I was on uh, Kyle and Jackie O's show and they were saying, look, we were in your last book, I heard you making a new book. And I said, oh, how did you make the last book? And they said, well, we cut your pubes off uh, live on radio. <laughs> and then we were, you know, being bawdy and enjoying it. And then we started to talk about Kylie and just in context, I said, you should get Kylie's pubes and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And welcome to the Heavy Entertainment Show. You know, I, I think that if you want to have a vanilla interview and you want to watch a vanilla interview, do a vanilla interview, you have plenty of places to go. And, uh, you know, I've got an album out, I'm 42. Uh, I have to make an impact. Start off as you mean to carry on. Like I say, welcome to the Heavy Entertainment Show. Thank you. I'm really hoping you've got a New Zealand story for me that's bawdy and filthy and dirty then. Yeah, but I need to, I need to work on that story. <laughs> I need to whittle at it, perfect it, make sure that it's ready for consumption. Yeah, there's, I was about to say there's nothing that makes me look good, but none of my stories really make me look good. <laughs> as you said, you're 42 now. Is it pretty much anything goes these days i mean do you feel confident enough that you can put together whatever you want on a record you can say whatever you want because you've you've been there you've done that i think more than ever i'm more nervous and neurotically worrying about the success of my album than i've ever been before i've written 75 plus songs for this album trying to get the perfect 10 and then i couldn't whittle it down to 10 so it's an 11 track album because I just couldn't take something off. I think it's my duty to represent the world as I see it. I think, was it Gandhi that said, be the change in the world that you want to see? Don't get, well, deep, don't get deep on me. I'm not going to, don't <laughs> worry. Don't worry, it'll do, soon come back to pubes and crabs. <laughs> This album, Heavy Entertainment, there's a lot going on here. There's some very big sort of Moulin Rouge kind of, of, of sounds and then you've got the, the, the ballads in there. I mean, how would you describe it? I would describe it as being an incredibly commercial album <laughs> if the year was 2002. <laughs> no, I'd describe it as being theatrical. Um, I would describe it as having, you know, interesting lyrics. Uh, I, would I would describe it as a big pop record. A few songs in there about, about y your family. And I, I asked Rod Stewart, I said, you know, when you play your songs to your kids, do they like them? And he said, no, they think they're crap. So I wondered how your family, how do they respond to your songs? I put Teddy on my lap the other day and we were on YouTube and I played her Nebworth, which is the big show that I had, one of the big shows that I did in the UK to 135,000 people. It's sort of like crowning glory of your career. And I was like, baby, I said, look, I said, uh, that's not a sea, that, that's people. And the, all of those people make up like a massive sea of people. About three and a half minutes in, I paused it and I said, what do you think? And she said, can we watch Peppa Pig? <laughs> She's not bothered. Has having a family given you perspective on your career, despite of all your success? Yeah, of course. Um, whereas before, there was not any point to it all. When I was a kid, I used to watch the TV and want to be like them. And I think subconsciously or consciously, I think, if only I could be that, maybe it would fix everything. I didn't know the, about the fix everything. I think that was the unconscious bit. And then I became that and it fixed nothing. It was just, you know, uh, the self-worth was still down here and the success was up here and it just, the warped perception caved my tiny brain. I go to work, I've got the best job in the world, but I'm a working dad. This is work and this is what I do for a living. And, um, and now it makes total sense. <laughs> You've partied hard. Uh, but you're off the booze now. So what constitutes a, a great night for you these days? Well, I've tried to be off the carbohydrates and the dairy. The road narrows as you get older, the sort of less and less shit you can do. And um, sadly, I realise that it's come to this, that I've sort of had a cake night. <laughs> a Tuesday night is cake night, and I have cake. And the sad realisation that cake gives me a hangover God! No! So what constitutes a good night is me, my wife, kids have gone to bed, and some cake. 
before the inevitable hangover. Bit of telly. Bit of TV. Mm. Love a bit of television. We mainly watch reality television, me and the wife. Not enough reality going on. You know, want a little bit more. No, yeah, a little bit more. The, the sort of stuff that reality TV can give you that acting can't. Uh, I'd rather watch the Housewives of Beverly Hills and see some real bitching going on. <laughs> see some absolute crazy bitch fest. And Inspired you, has it, in your career? Uh, reality television. Yeah, in more yeah. ways than one. <laughs> in more ways, I'm sat there watching Big Brother and going, I should do that in a video. I should dress like a rabbit. Well, you haven't done the uh, Big Brother, but you did do well, X Factor the other day with, with Sharon Osbourne. Is, is this the new thing, judging, judging others? I've done it before, and I kind of go in going, well, they, you know, you want, they want your opinion. Well, don't upset anybody. Well, that's not your opinion. You've got to give your absolutely, yeah, but you're going to really upset people. They kind of probably look up to you and then you, your words have weight. Yeah, but I'm employed to do good television and give my opinion. So I'm sort of on TV thinking, ah, oh, he's crap. Can't say he's crap, can I? Oh, I can. He's crap. Oh, I wish I hadn't have said that. I've upset him now. Have you missed the stage? I mean, you talk about acting. I mean, there's a certain amount of acting and performance when you're on the stage. It's so... all acting. It's all performance. The audience is being paid to entertain, and it is a performance, you know. And um, many, many times, the communion between you and your uh, audience is reciprocated, and it's beyond spiritual. It's beyond religious it's better than that, you know. There are not words to describe how good it is. And then some other nights when you are tired and you are emotional or you are depressed, nobody go in or buy a ticket to see Robbie Williams because he's going to be the best depressed <laughs> he's ever been. You know, I have a duty to perform and I have a duty to give people their money's worth. Will we see you in New Zealand with this album? Say yes. Yes. Good, good answer. Yes. I can categorically say right now, sitting in front of you, having been commanded to say yes, <laughs> that it, yes, it will be a definite. Uh, unless it's not. Unless it's not, yeah. and then it's a no. Then it's a no. Yeah. But otherwise, we're looking good. We're looking... You've promised. 100% right now in this seat, absolutely, positively, definitely. Unless by the time we get up out of this seat, something changes.